Aside from Caviar Dream Studios being the production hub for Caviar Dream's Alkaline Water, it's also a multi-use production studio that you can use to entertain guests, to record, or for any of your multimedia needs. I have the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Xavier Peoples. Hello. How y'all doing? Good, good. Thank you so much for coming out. So a lot of people do not know that you are a finance banker. You also are co-owner of MBAR. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I have a daytime job, a nighttime job, and then a night nighttime job. Okay. So the daytime job, I'm a private banker. Um, and so I bank very wealthy people and help them with their estate planning and their wealth strategies. Additionally, I own MBAR on Auburn Avenue, 186 Auburn Ave. Um, I'm also a part owner of Open for Business, which is a co-working space, and um, I have a small venture capital fund, and so we invest in black technology companies. So how did you get started with the financial banking part? I went to school and my major in college was finance, but even before that, I just always took an interest in business and finance. And so when I was growing up, my dad was a bus driver. He was also an entrepreneur, but I always wanted to be a, a like, like my dad, but a little bit different than my dad. I wanted to put on a suit. So I did research and I found out about finance and banking. And so that's how I got into finance and banking. And ultimately, that was a natural, seamless fit for entrepreneurship and being a businessman. So is that where you got the idea for MBAR and you knew you wanted to be an entrepreneur, so did you already have those actual businesses in mind? I've been in business since I was 10. My very first business was, I used to cut grass. There was a guy from my church, he had a very big yard. I was cutting grass and he said, hey Xavier, you need some help, you should call some of your friends. And I told him I didn't want to call my friends because I didn't want to split the money with them. <laughs> and so he said, well look, I'll pay you more and you can pay them a little bit less. You need some help. This will take you a week to do. He actually was the first person who taught me how to be a businessman of making the lion's share of the money and paying people and delegating and paying people to work for you. And from there, it just went on to getting people to work for me to do different things. So in college, we started throwing parties at West Georgia. So our very first party was a refund check party. Okay. Because getting a refund check that was a big deal to everyone everyone had money and so we just used to throw a big party to celebrate the refund checks and then from there we just took off, took off. so you always knew you were going to be an entrepreneur from the day that guy taught me how to make the lion's share of the money and pay people to work for me do you feel like college was necessary for your career path or to be an entrepreneur period so this is why a college education is important not necessarily for the the practical sense but what a college education, at least it did for me, is it made it taught me how to complete a task. So you start freshman year, you finish your senior year, you have trials and tribulations in the middle. You got to learn how to grow up and be on your own. And so it helped me to grow up and to become an adult, to become responsible and to learn how to finish tasks. With me, my education taught me how to be focused. And then in addition to being focused, it taught me how to complete a task. And apply that and be an executor, for sure. Absolutely. I always say that college is definitely good for those life lessons like that. For sure. And it gives you a buffer period to make mistakes and it still not be detrimental to your overall success. Um, obviously, every entrepreneur is a risk taker. Yeah. To what do you attribute your ability to take risks? My motto in life is you can't be afraid to fail. People think that failure is the opposite of success, but actually failure is a part of success. And life is you have to learn to fail better the next time. And so risk taker, that's what I am. I'm just not afraid to fail. And if I do fail, I, I learn my lesson and I just try to get better from it. My, my risk are more calculated. So that's what it's all so about. So don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid fear, to fear. Don't be afraid to even start because you're afraid. Don't let the fear stop you. gotta you. start. Now, what is your competitive advantage? 
with me, my approach is I'm relation oriented. I try to be your friend first. I try to understand you and get to know you because it's easier for people to do business with people that they like. Right. Versus you coming to them and trying to sell them on some type of transaction. I'm not a salesman. Um, I'm a relationship oriented guy. So I'm going to go play golf with you. I'm going to get to know your kids. I'm going to get to know your wife. And then after all of that, we can do some type of business. And so that's my advantage. Whereas most people, you know, these guys, they come in or, or ladies, they come in, they try to sell you on things that you may or may not need and don't even know you. Right. And so it's all about having a relationship and it's not a transaction and getting to know people. If, if you're a customer and you come in our establishment two times, we charge our bartenders and our servers to get to know your name. So the, the third time that you come, they're calling you by your name, they know your drink, they know your food order. And so that's one of the competitive advantages that we have. We're more than a bar. We do politics out the dark. We're big on allowing our customer base or encouraging our customer base to become civically and politically engaged. When you add a combination of good customer service, our servers and our bartenders, knowing each one of our customers' names, knowing their drinks, knowing the food that they like to order. On top of that, your bar as a whole being civically and politically engaged, it's a good formula for success. A lot of people do not know that Auburn Avenue in 1957, it was considered the richest Negro street in, in America. the United States of America. So why did you use um, why did you choose to put in bar on Auburn Avenue? For that very reason, being born and raised in Atlanta, I know the historical significance of Auburn Avenue, that that was the epicenter of black success. With me and my business partners, what we wanted to do was bring Auburn Avenue back. Mm -hmm. And that's important to me, that's important to my business partners. And so, you know, we could have easily invested our money in Midtown or in Buckhead, but we wanted to take a risk and invest our money on Auburn Avenue so we can eventually be the catalyst to bring back black economic power. Well, you chose Auburn Avenue to kind of help bring back that his history of having that black, almost black Wall Street in Atlanta. Absolutely. Where in America, in these major cities, can you go to a street and it represents African Americans and you have African American grocery store? african-american bank african-american restaurants the whole street represents the pride of african-americans nowhere in this country and so my ultimate goal is to bring that spirit that idea to auburn avenue moving back to failure um you say you're very comfortable with failure sure what is the biggest lesson you've learned from failure well, there was one time i did a concert tour by myself it was diggy simmons omg girls and Jacob Lattimore. So it was like a team tour. We went to Bacon, Little Rock, Arkansas, Mobile, Alabama, Tallahassee, Florida, and a couple of other cities. The first two cities was Macon and Little Rock, Arkansas it did very well. And let's just say the last five cities didn't do well at all. It did well enough where I, I was breaking even, but on the last concert, no one came and I lost $150,000. That's a big loss. My wife was in Paris, so she's shopping. And I, I'm looking at the Amex <laughs> and I'm seeing it going up, up and up. I had to literally call her and tell her that I lost all the money. She was boohooing over the phone. Going back to one of my original comments, you got people depending on you. And I let her down. Mm -hmm. And so that's why that particular failure was so hard for me in that instance. It's because she was depending on me and I let her down and I put everything at risk. I figured it out. I hustled, legally hustled, mm -hmm. and we missed no meals, my rent was paid. The true definition of a hustler is a person who could lose it and get it back fast and work hard. What advice would you give someone interested in being an entrepreneur or entering the field of finance? Be passionate about it. Do something that there's a demand for or a lack of demand for mm -hmm. that you can supply and bring to the market. Do something different and you'll be able to have increase your probability of being more successful. Don't ever let anybody hold you back, any type of relationship hold you back from being successful. Well, where do you go for mentorship or advice? Nobody should be able, be able to motivate you more than you can motivate yourself. I know for a fact that the minute that I walk out of that door, there may be something that's gonna try to tear me down that day, and so I just have to remind myself that I'm the shit. And that whatever's in front of me, whatever task or goal is in front of me, I'm gonna get it done. 
a lot of people don't know this, but you are one of my mentors, my financial mentors. Yes. That's how we met a couple years ago. Yes. Helping me save money. The best piece of advice that I that you have given me and I have shared with others is to write down every dollar that I spend so I know where I'm going, especially when it comes to budgeting and cutting costs and seeing what I'm spending money on that I don't really need to spend money on. So that's something that I took and I've actually shared with others and they have even said that it helped. Also, don't loan money to family or friends. Don't. We don't loan money. So don't call me asking me for no money. Like, how do you find the strength to keep going when you're tired and you're like physically drained? Like, you just are, I need a break. I need to take a, a time to myself. Number one, I take advantage of my weekends. Sundays are non-negotiable. I'm not doing nothing. It's all about being task-oriented. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm writing out my task for the day. So I want to allow things to throw me off so I can make sure I accomplish. Really, um, the key to my success is just being over-organized. So if you're over-organized, then your day doesn't get away from you. Because what happens is with a lot of people, their day gets away from them. You wake up in the morning with intentions on doing something, you get that phone call and your whole day is wrong. Right. What are some things that you feel like you can't live without. I cannot live without my daily agenda because I'm a very busy person. My brain only has so much capacity to remember things and so I have to write things down. But why are you compelled to help the African American community financially? I believe that if we can become financially free, then a lot of the, the ailments in our community um, would not plague us. So when you talk about drugs, when you talk about crime, the dotted line that it goes back to is money and financial empowerment. People sell drugs because they need money. They need money. And so they may not have any of our any other opportunities um, to make money. And so what I try to do is expose them to different avenues of making money, but not only making money, that's the easy part, but once you make money, how do you make that money work for you? And my line of business is all about protecting and preserving your legacy through economics. And so that's what I try to instill in our community. You have to learn how to manage money. You have to learn how to budget. You have to learn how to save. You have to learn how to how to invest because it's not a natural discipline. You no, know, I tell people all the time, I'm not here to stop you from having fun. I just want to prioritize that fun for you so you can have you have more fun later um, on. So it's all about de deferred gratification. But it's important for all entrepreneurs out there who are African Americans to be successful so we can help our community. Right. So you really live in what you preaching? Absolutely. That's the only way I know. Um, any last words you got for can't be afraid to fail. You're going to fail, but you're going to feel better next time. And eventually the success that you long for, you're going to receive that success. You're going to walk in that success. Fail forward. Fail forward. Each time. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you, Zach, for sitting down with me. Let them know where they can find you, Mbar, on social media, where they can stay connected. So you can find me at Xavier, X-A-V-I-E-R underscore peoples, P-E-L-P-L-E-S. You can find Mbar at Mbar Atlanta. Our address is 186 Auburn Avenue on the historic Auburn Avenue. And when you get your coins up, then we can come holler at you. Yes. Our financial banking. That's right. Three million, come see me. Three, that's what we need. That's what we that's need. That's the minimum of three million. Okay, well, I got a little minute before we get there. <laughs> but thank you so much. It's your girl, Bri Renee. This is our first episode of Caviar Conversations. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me. I'm here. <laughs> thank you. All right.